Welcome to this edition of Labor Vision. I'm Bob Delaney, Executive Director of the Institute for Labor Studies and Research. Labor Vision, a production of the Institute, focuses on topics of importance to working Rhode Islanders. We hope you enjoy this edition. Welcome to this edition of Labor Vision. I'm your host, Bob Delaney. On April 11th, many of you will remember trying to go to a grocery store in the afternoon and there was nobody in the store. At that particular point, UFCW Local 328 went on strike after a long term of negotiations with the company and with management. I'm very fortunate in this edition to have with me Tim Melia, who is the president of the United Food and Commercial Workers Local 328, and Dominic Pontarelli, secretary treasurer of the local. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us, Bob. Thanks, Bob. I'm really looking forward to this conversation because I think it does two things. It puts a, um, a face on an event that happened in Rhode Island that affected a large portion of the population. But it's an also an, ed an opportunity to educate the public on this event but also organize labor and if and when a strike takes place, why it takes place. So, um, Tim, give me kind of a background on this whole thing. We know that a strike is kind of the last straw and negotiations, I know, had been going on for a long time. What tipped the scale? Well, we had gotten to a point where we'd been in, in numerous bargaining sessions with the company and uh, at one point the company came to us and handed us a last and final offer. Um, in that offer, there were still bonuses on the table. They still weren't going to fund our pension. And the, the proposal on health care uh, was not adequate, adequate. It was going to cost our members much more money out of pocket um, to, to have health care. So there were just too many things on the table that the company was refusing to bargain over. And we got to a point where they, they left us no other option. Seemed to be a long time that you were negotiating as well. You started negotiating sometime in January? January 14th was our first uh, negotiating session. So we had, we had all total close to, close to 50 negotiating sessions uh, from beginning until we finally ratified. And, and I think, Dominic, it's important because you led many of those people, you and Tim, but you in particular spent a lot of time getting people ready. When you talk about getting people ready for a strike, um, it's important that they get information, that they're informed. So I suspect you spent a lot of time informing your shop stewards of where negotiations were, what the potential was to walk out, and eventually having to tell them that it was time to walk out because they were being treated unfairly. Give me some of the history of that. Well, uh, we had to put a, a plan together. We knew uh, going into negotiations it would be difficult, but within a month or so, we, we, there was different kind of negotiations. Um, the company was playing hardball, um, so at that time we had to prepare uh, for the strike um, if it came. And we prepared for it, we, our staff was well prepared, and then our stewards were well prepared. Uh, we put captains together, so when the time to execute the strike what, uh, came, we executed, um, we put the strike together and they executed it for the 11 days of the strike. It's really important that when a strike takes place, um, that the members of the union are informed. But it was really critical that when you went out, the customers in the store, who were, some of them were left high and dry, and that's what happens in a strike. You had a lot of support from those customers. It appeared to me that people weren't crossing picket lines, and people were on the street with those workers supportive of what they were doing. Right from the beginning uh, of the strike, uh, the customers, uh, they were locked out. Um, if you were in line, um, you left your, uh, your, your groceries there and they locked the doors. Uh, following that, then uh, our, you know, within five minutes, our uh, uh, members were on the picket line. Um, there was no incidents on the picket line from the 11 days. Um, and I think the important part about it was that there were three factors in the strike, a community, customers and the labor movement in Rhode Island all came together and that was the key of the strike. Plus our members, um, they were the heroes of the strike. 
they stood out there in bad weather. Um, it, most of the days out there were rainy and cold, and they held that picket line for 11 days. Mm -hmm. uh, the last day of the strike, the Easter Sunday, there were 30 to 40 plus on that picket line. So they were committed and they followed our, uh, you know, they followed us. Tim, it's important during a strike like this that organized labor stays together. Mm -hmm. And my observations and, and, and just the conversation about the, the background and the history of what happened during that seven, eight day period, organized labor really pulled together. I know that when IBEW 2323 went on strike, UFCW was there. When Teamsters went on strike, UFCW was there. This is a, organized labor is a family. It's a family that supports each other, whether it's improving labor laws or working conditions. I think UFCW strike was an example of that brotherhood. It was an absolute example of that brotherhood. Um, you know, the, 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 as Don was saying, the customers were one thing, and the customers were great. We couldn't have won this strike without the customer support. But the turnout of organized labor on our picket lines was, was overwhelming. Uh, IBW, Teamsters, SEIU, the teachers, firefighters, everybody came to the picket line at one point or another, bringing food, bringing meals to the, to the strikers. Um, and, and it wasn't just in Rhode Island, it was in Massachusetts, it was in Connecticut. All all over where, where all the uh, stop and stop locations were, labor, organized labor came out and they took care of their brothers and sisters on the picket line. They did an outstanding job. And I think that's just so important for people to realize that that um, long history of organized labor coming together to improve the lives of working people, mm -hmm. that still continues today because there are people out there who would say, well, they're just a group of greedy people who want more money. Th that having, been said by people on the outside is not reflected in the views of your customers. Any <coughs> successful strike will generally have the support of the people that they serve with it. And you had that. You had the support of the other members of organized labor. But there almost seemed to be, aside from a long term of negotiating, um, a lot of unfair accusations about organized labor there almost seemed to be this kind of perfect situation that was aligning with the use of technology in the store that was driving this even more. And you might want to comment. Everybody commented about the robot. The robot. Marty the robot is in the stores. Uh, the company, uh, Stop and Shop, has made a huge investment in Marty the robot. Um, numbers I've heard are estimated to cost about $30,000 per that tall unit with the googly eyes on it that follow you around the store. Um, the the at the time it was coming out, the, the reception it got from the customers was very negative. The customers didn't like it. And the customers viewed it, I think, at the time too, along with other technologies that the company is bringing in, is this is going to take away jobs. This is taking away uh, somebody's job security, um, and it's going to have a negative impact on workers in the state. And I think the customers really saw that. The customers understood that whole uh, connection between the technology um, and, and what, how it affects working people. Right down to that, now they have to go out into the front the store and check out their own groceries when they're checking out. They wait in longer lines at the deli because there's not enough help in the deli. So all these things created a perfect storm, um, more or less, at the time when we were going on strike. And it was basically something we all rallied around was Marty the Robot. What, and, and you talk about the, the, uh, the checkouts where people check out their own, mm -hmm. uh, their own groceries. There's a part of me in the back of my head cell telling me somewhere, there's a lot of people, there are some people who are not very honest. Mm -hmm. Stop and Shop must have been losing some money oh. on people checking out and not maybe including everything. Now maybe I'm dead wrong, maybe everybody was honest. It, it, and and they, they tie that into their whole budget uh, in, within that, that they know there's going to be so much of a loss tied to this technology. Not only do you have those self-scanners in the front of the stores where you scan your own orders as you're going, but they also have these handheld devices now that you can carry with you throughout the store, and it's on the honor system that you scan your item and put it in a bag in your carriage as you go. You have to assume that not everything that they're scanning is getting into their carriage as well. So there is a certain amount, I'm sure, theft that's, a, that's a, taking place along the lines with those. And even people who have to wait in line, look, we know that those things are in, in, in more than just stop and stop, shore, mm -hmm. stop and shop stores. But there's a, a, there's a portion of the population that will say, no, thank you. I'm paying for a service and I want the service. Dominic, do you get, do you get complaints that you hear from people, customers in the store saying, I don't want to use self-checkout? Well, I think most people, I think I tell you from the strike, 
um, some people that went through the picket line um, came out because they did, they assumed that there was going to be a cashier in there and there was they didn't know how to use it. Um, so uh, people on that on that end didn't want you know they realized right away that they want no part of this. But I think the the, the key factor is that that they're kind of educating they're pushing their customers to use these things. Um, and, and there's less hours in the store. Um, and I think the customers, they see that. And they're saying, well, you know, there's, less there's less cashiers, and I got more uh, scan registers that I have to scan my own order. Um, so I think that was helpful to us during the strike, leading up to the strike and then the strike, because people don't want to do that. They want service, like you just said. Let's talk about the strike itself for a minute. How many people, how many members were out in your local between southeastern Massachusetts and Rhode Island? We had 9,000, over 9,000 in our local that uh, were out on strike just through 328. There were 30,000 total throughout New England that were on strike uh, for this uh, for this strike. And it, it, was, it was amazing because it, not just in our local, we had great solidarity in our local. My, our members were, did an outstanding job, um, you know, sticking together on their lines and, and holding their lines and being out there every day to what Dom said in terrible weather. But we pulled 149 stores throughout New England in a matter of about 10 minutes. From when we called the strike, we closed down the company in 10 minutes. And that was the membership all across New England. And that's, that's so important. That yep. education that we talked yep. about and their solidarity and their willingness to walk out and do it because it's a tough thing to do. Oh, it's a huge, it's a huge thing to do. I mean, this is impacting your lives, the lives of your family, your paycheck, everything. This is this is a huge step, and and we had a hundred percent of our members crossed, not you know, crossed, the, walked out, and not crossed the picket line. So that speaks volumes about their commitment exactly. to organized labor, their commitment to union, mm -hmm. but also their understanding of the responsibility that collectively they can make a difference individually. It won't make a difference yeah. at all. And it went back to your point too about giving the information. Information. They knew through the whole process the information. They knew what was going on in bargaining. They knew what the company was offering. They knew that they wouldn't accept what the company was offering up to that point. And when we said we feel we have no choice, they were ready to go. They're the real heroes of the strike as, mm -hmm. as our members. Yep. And it's heroes. interesting that it was actually you were the last local to go out, Rhode Island was, um, other other states were out before we were on strike, correct? No, we all went at the same time. Oh, okay, see I was at the end, oh, and maybe it was the strike votes that came strike earlier? Strike votes came earlier, 1445 up in Boston, they took theirs two weeks before us, and then Connecticut uh, took theirs, and um, my, uh, myself and local 1459 in Springfield, we took them on the same day at the last, so we were the last ones to get the strike authorizations. That's a real unique situation, and, and in reality, it must have been one of the largest strikes in terms of the numbers of people in the United States in recent history. It is, from my understanding, it's probably one of the fourth, I think it was up around the fourth largest uh, labor uh, strike, labor dispute in the country within the last 10 years. What about when we look f forward to the future? There were some concerns that you had that I'm not sure they were all addressed, mm -hmm. but you know, the, the, the major issues were addressed but there's a conversation going on out there about meat cutters and how in reality in another year or two there may not be the same level of service for meat cutters and stop and shop. Yeah. You're right. Right now, Stop and Shop is in the process of building a 200,000 square foot plant in Quonset Point. Um, and in that, they're going to be doing centralized meat cutting out of that plant. So what they'll do is they'll cut it all on that plant, uh, not be paying the same wages and benefits that, that meat cutters now presently uh, make and earn in, in the stores. And then they'll package it there, um, put gas in it to preserve it so it'll have a long, long shelf life, and then ship it out to all the stores in New England. So the customers are no longer going to be seeing uh, Joe the meat cutter behind the counter where they can go and say, hey Joe, you might, I'm having my Christmas dinner, can you give me a five pound roast? It's all going to be what you, what you have uh, in the case. Well, thank you gentlemen. We could go on for another 15 minutes and another 15 minutes just on, on the event itself. I want to congratulate you both for having both the knowledge and the ability to be able to inform your members about the importance of at the last end, you, when you go on strike, here's what happens. I want to congratulate you for your success because there's no doubt um, you stayed strong through the whole thing. Congratulations. Thank you, Bob. 
Thank My guests this evening were Tim Melia from the President of the United Food and Commercial Workers Local 328 and Dominic Pontarelli, the Secretary Treasurer. Um, and we had this wonderful discussion that we're hoping we can follow up on again over the strike with the uh, supermarket stop and shop. Thank you for watching this edition of Labor Vision and we'll talk to you soon. Watching Labor Vision, a production of the Institute for Labor Studies and Research. My name is Erica Hammond, Workforce Labor Liaison at the Institute. Joined with me today is Matt Taby, Principal Officer of Teamsters Local 251, Tony Suazo, and Paul Santos, also of Teamsters Local 251. Thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for Thank having you. us. You're welcome. Now, tonight we're going to talk a little bit about the settling contract talks at Rhode Island Hospital um, and if you want to get started on how you guys approached this situation and um, how you thought the process went, or uh, how you went into the process. Well, I mean, the process this time out was a lot, I never want to say easy, because mm -hmm. it's never really easy, right. but we had like such animosity from uh, the old administration on our first go around, the mm -hmm. first set of contract talks. So, uh, I mean, the, the relationship was better, and it was more professional during it, so. And they already had some it will left over, I know, from their negotiations with uh, UNAP. Do you think that this had anything to do with going into this process? Uh, I think it made them a little bit more professional and mm -hmm. be maybe a little bit ahead of the curve on what to upset us with and not. Right. But it, it, overall, it, it wasn't any easier, mm -hmm. if you will, because right. of that. But so they weren't necessarily in the market for any bad press, but uh, no, I don't think they. I don't think they, they <laughs> yeah, needed any more right. bad press. <laughs> so it was more. Was it more of a relaxed atmosphere this time? It was more professional. Yeah, it was more professional. Okay. And was there any point of this where you guys thought it might go south? I, I would. <laughs> a few uh, times. I'm going to jump in. Yeah. yeah. The uh, what I would say is that there were um, there were a few times where. Uh, you know, we were talking about big issues, mm -hmm. particularly once economics were introduced, where uh, healthcare, I'll use that as an example, where healthcare was a big issue, we wanted the hospital to, uh, to move, to, a big proposal was to put all of our members into our health fund. Mm -hmm. And we had set up a, a, a series of membership meetings at our, at our union hall over the course of an entire day. And leading up to that, uh, you know, as a way to mobilize their members and get them more involved, but it was, uh, you know, our message to the to the management was, mm -hmm. we can turn this into a strike authorization vote just very quickly. So mm -hmm. let's let's get down to where we need to be. So it really did send the message. They didn't really know what we were doing in terms of uh, our membership, and uh, we were able to make a lot of progress as a result. I mean, I mean, we also, I'm sorry to cut no, you off, but no. we, we also had like a t-shirt campaign and that was to mobilize the members and mm -hmm. th that, I mean, one, once management starts seeing, you know, these t-shirts being worn mm -hmm. around the facility, I think it really got their attention. So all the members were, um, they were already aware of this the, happening oh yeah. long beforehand. The members were aware. I mean, they, we, they, kept, we kept them informed throughout mm -hmm. the whole process from mm -hmm. the beginning, you know, middle part towards the end. Mm -hmm. You know, like Paul said, with a t-shirt campaign and flyers and notices, uh, blast pages going out. That's awesome. All that information was going out. Right. That's so helpful. So was there, correct me, um, remind me, was there ever a strike vote in place? No strike vote. No strike vote? No, okay. Um, and so you were able to end this completely without job action, with no job action needed? No job action needed. No, no we, like we said, we had a, a, a number of membership meetings at our, at our hall. We had, uh, you know, people wearing pins. We had uh, T-shirts. Um, but it didn't get to the point where, you know, we didn't feel it was necessary to have mm -hmm. a, an informational picket or, or a strike vote or... Um, or even a 10-day notice. In healthcare, you have to give 10-day notice before you either do an informational picket or even strike. Mm -hmm. So it didn't get to that point. Um, you know, we were prepared to if, if, we, if we had to, but, right. um, and we, 
you know, told told management that, but mm -hmm. ultimately the goal was to get the best possible contract without having to um, take that action. And are you able to go in any more um, into more detail on some of the points that were brought up in the contract, not just the health care, but were there other major points that you wanted to make sure you saw in this new contract? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, getting everybody on the health care, obviously that was the, the, the main focal yeah. point, but job preservation, uh, you know, um, like like a lot of the things that they wanted to take back, mm -hmm. you know, like they wanted to take back double overtimes, they wanted to take back uh, uh, job bidding rights, mm -hmm. you know, where it would kind of constrain the employees, because it's all about advancement, because mm -hmm. Rhode Island Hospital has always been a place where you can come in at some lower level job yeah. and advance through the system. I mean, I started there mm -hmm. working, you know, I worked in the laundry department, I advanced to a job that I finally liked, mm -hmm. but it took me the years, that was one of the big things that they tried taking away and we wanted to keep, you know, uh, we got great workers comp language, extension mm -hmm. of that, I mean, I don't know if, if you want to. There was, um like we mentioned, uh, protections against subcontracting and layoffs, those are were, those were key demands. Um, there were some issues over retirement, um, uh, similar to what, what, uh, the, what, the, what UNAP faced, um, which we came to a similar, similar agreement. So there mm -hmm. were, uh, you know, good, good wage increases. Uh, one of our mm -hmm. big demands was to get a $15 minimum wage. That's right. um, uh, during the life, at some point in the life of the agreement, and they mm -hmm. they did agree to that. So um, there were a number of uh, improvements. Um, one of one of the one of the issues that we made a significant improvement on was actually where the hospital, instead of being able to give you a four weeks notice to a, of a shift change that can change your life, mm -hmm. and you had no recourse, now mm -hmm. you had uh, bumping rights. So that, just as an example of some of the uh, some of the issues, there were a whole number of issues. Um, you know, the hospital was more tactful in some of their proposals. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they, they, had some, they had some bad, you know, concessions that they wanted that they did not get, but they weren't as brazen as they were, mm -hmm. no, you know, no. four years prior. No, four no, years no. prior it was, you know, one thing after the other and us trying to fight it off and still make improvements at the same time. So mm -hmm. it was, sorry, it was uh, definitely, uh, um, you know, a calmer environment, but still tense and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, a, a squaring off of two large organizations. Right. I mean, Lifespan is the largest private sector employer in the state of Rhode Island, so they're, they, they're not going to give in easily. Mm -hmm. No. No. And Tony, being directly in the hospital, what was it like talking with members? What were some of the conversations like? Uh, positive. Uh, yeah you know, overwhelmingly positive, you mm -hmm. know, the shift differentials that had not ever been touched were, you know, were improved. Mm -hmm. You know, like Matt mentioned, the uh, five for 15, that was addressed um, from, you know, for the starting rate. And mm -hmm. by the time that the contract ends, everybody, the minimum wage will be 15. So those were huge wins, which, you know, the membership mm -hmm. sees that, you know, mm -hmm. now in writing and th they're all for it. And I imagine with the conversation being so positive and people being engaged, did it pull a lot of members into these informational sessions? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the meetings grew uh, over the course of the campaign. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. And um, at these meetings, uh, what was, you mentioned the shirt you guys created. Mm -hmm. What, was there a slogan on the shirt or what was, uh, they were just kind of a... Was it fight for, fight for Injustice? Fight for Justice. Fight for Justice. So it was a fight for justice. solidarity. Solidarity. Everyone wore it. Solidarity. That's really, I would have liked mm -hmm. to, never want to be in a hospital, but, we, we, but we, I would have liked to see it. We, we have to get your shirt. <laughs> okay, yeah. so, yeah. right. <laughs> I'll hold you to that. <laughs> and now are the members happy, I, they were positive going into this, are they happy with this contract oh, now? Abs absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. I mean, you, you're never going to satisfy 100% of the people, right. but I, I started working there, I don't want to tip off my age too much, but close to 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. No and one will do the thir math. 30 plus, <laughs> and uh, th throughout all the years, I've been a liaison steward through that whole time, involved in the union heavily, and this by far, I think, is the best really? contact best contract the hospital has ever had. Because we, we've made gains in, in so many different ways and, mm -hmm. and, and not just monetary, but it gave ex added protections to, mm -hmm. to our members. And it didn't uh, affect any current member, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in, 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 in a bad way, right. you know, so 
we're, we're very proud of this contract. It's a huge accomplishment. Congratulations to you guys Thank and you. to the members. Thank it's you. awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, before when we were talking, um, this is a side, side note. Um, I know you guys just had your car show, right? Mm -hmm. How did that go? That was awesome. That was, that awesome. was uh, our car show. Had, it was probably the most, it was definitely the most cars that we've, we've had in the five years. Really? That we've was, had. It was a good turnout? It was yes. a great turnout. Not awesome. that I got to see too awesome. much of it because I was on the food line oh. and we couldn't keep up with the food, <laughs> but. <laughs> Everyone yeah, had but their, it was a good their time. spot that they yeah. helped out with. And yeah. I, I fortunately get to uh, float around a lot. And, yeah. Yeah. And we should just, get to see the car. Yeah. I, well, I, I, I got to see a bunch of burgers and hot dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a yearly event that you guys yearly. do? Yearly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. And we, and, and we have other events during the course, like we have a Touch a Truck. Touch is a great yeah. family yeah. event. Is, it, is that, did that already pass or is that no, coming up? No, that's coming up it's also. What, do you know when it's coming up? up? August. August 3rd. August 3rd. Is that your next event that's coming yes. up? Or? Yes, that's our next yeah. event. Yeah. 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 It's great family oriented. And that's what we're all about also, you know. Right. Want to bring everybody in. Like, like generally we run our membership meetings, usually the summer is off. And usually that's the gathering when we, we get the information out, mm -hmm. but it's a time for Teamsters to get together. But it shouldn't be just relegated just to right. those monthly meetings. We do these events for charity during the mm -hmm. summer. I mean, all year round, actually, you mm -hmm. know, just to it, mobilize the members. It brings all, all the entire yes. membership together. Right. You yeah. know, Absolutely. You know, if you work at the hospital, you may not know that your neighbor works mm -hmm. for Centrix and mm -hmm. that you are. You're meeting in the same place. So, mm -hmm. oh, you know, we're both part of the same family. Right. Not just the same community, but the same union family as well. It's a far more wholesome approach to organizing too because yes, um, just note from myself personally um, as many of you know my father is a teamster mm -hmm. and um, I think yes. one of the first yeah, one of the first um, things that was said to me when I first started working in community organizing and um, with labor organizations um, was I think it was Matt Maney um, he said she grew up on Teamsters Healthcare and um, I was there when he, when he yeah, said that and yeah. I was like yes I did and I knew it because just from meeting a lot of people, just my friend group, who mm -hmm. have family in mm -hmm. unions that just don't really know how unions function, I was super thankful that I had known through my father and Absolutely. kind of known how things worked and knew what it did for our family growing up mm -hmm. and how it allowed us to live comfortably. Uh, and, and we preach that to our members. Yeah. You know, go home, have those conversations at the dinner table, right. talk up union, you know, get, get, you know, give the knowledge to your, because, you know, mm -hmm. we're not going to be here forever. And we have to, mm -hmm. we have to, you know, educate that next generation to right. carry on the union word and, you know, yeah. keep going forward. Because as you all know, I mean, you know, big government and, you know, they, they, they're mm -hmm. beating down the working class. Stronger so, together. Stronger right. together. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Well, absolutely. Before, we, before we wrap up, do you guys have anything else you want to add or anything you want to say? I mean, more it's kind of the piggyback what you uh, what you mentioned about having families growing up on teams of healthcare. Um, the most, uh, the biggest impact of this Rhode Island Hospital contract is um, us, our health fund growing by, you know, fifty percent mm -hmm. from where it was. It's mm -hmm. adding, you know, a, at least a thousand more members onto Teams of Health and Welfare, which is which is huge. Mm -hmm. um, huge to us, huge to the you know families in general. So if you're able to, uh, uh, you know, uh, afford and have great healthcare benefits, and you know, uh, prescriptions aren't getting any cheaper, um, you know, hospitals are, are are you know, and healthcare in general is mm -hmm. is, is not getting any cheaper. So um, this is a plan that that takes care of families, and that's what we're all about. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Oh, thank you thank again you for, for having us. us. Thank you, and thank congratulations you. again. That's thank you. Such thank you. a win for you thank guys. You. Well, That's it's awesome. a win for the members. Right, for so. your members or families. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, my name is Erica Hammond. You're watching Labor Vision. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope to see you again next week. Have a great night. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Labor Vision. We appreciate your input and encourage your comments. Labor Vision can be seen on this channel three times each week, Tuesday at 7 p.m., Thursday at 8 p.m., and Saturday at 5 p.m.